Hola, buenos días. Mi nombre es Dinka Nieto y hoy tengo el privilegio de poder compartir mi testimonio con ustedes. Soy peruana y vengo de una familia disfuncional. Soy eh, la última de seis hermanos. Cuando yo tenía siete años mi, de edad, mi mami murió a los 42 años atropellada por un autobús. Good morning, my name is Dinka and I have the privilege of sharing my testimony this morning. I was born and raised in Peru and I am the youngest of six children. When I was seven, my mother was unfortunately ran over by a vehicle and passed away at 42. Desde ese entonces, mi vida se tornó muy triste e insegura, ya que no tenía un lugar estable donde vivir. Vivía de casa en casa, de familia en familia. From that point on, my life changed. My life became very unstable. I was insecure and struggled with the idea that I was unwanted and unloved. I didn't have a consistent home, and as the youngest, I would hop from sibling's house to sibling's house. No one really wanted me there with them. Fue entonces que una amiga de mi escuela me adoptó en su casa cuando yo era un adolescente. Y a pesar de los malos tratos que yo recibí, tuve la oportunidad de poder terminar mis estudios universitarios en administración turística y hotelera. Me independicé, renté un departamento y empecé a vivir sola. As a teenager, my childhood friend and her family adopted me and allowed me to live with them permanently. Because of them, I was able to go to school, graduate, and um, go to college and get a degree in tourism and hospitality. Upon graduation, I started working, I got my own apartment, and I began to live my own life independent of others. Empecé a vivir una vida desenfrenada, tratando de buscar tratando de buscar en personas la aceptación y el amor que nunca tuve. No me importaba quién sea, solo quería sentirme amada. I started living a very reckless life. I felt alone and unloved and found comfort in relationships. I didn't care how I was treated or how much damage I was doing to myself. I just wanted attention and I wanted to feel loved. Mi vida estaba llena de inmoralidad y dependiendo del licor ya que bebiendo me hacía sentir segura. My life was empty and full of immorality. I turned to alcohol abuse to fill the void. Drinking helped me to forget and feel better about myself. Después de tanto vagar y sentirme cada vez peor, decidí cambiar mi vida y fui a una iglesia a confesar mis pecados. Me sentía tan horrible conmigo misma, pero en la iglesia donde fui me dijeron, no te preocupes, hija, Reza tres padres nuestros y tus pecados serán perdonados. Salí de ahí llorando amargamente y me sentía peor, más vacía, sin rumbo. Quería sentirme amada y perdonada y le decía, Dios, ¿dónde estás? After feeling terrible about my life and decisions, I decided I needed a change. I went to a church and confessed all my sins to a priest. I sat in his office sobbing and confessing, feeling terrible about myself. His response to me was, no worries, my dear. Say this prayer three times and you will be forgiven. I left her feeling uneasy and unresolved. This is not the answer I was looking for. I wanted to feel loved and forgiven and I prayed to God, where are you? Can you hear me? Seguí con mi vida desenfrenada hasta que en unos viajes que hice conocí a mi esposo. Lo vi tan seguro del mismo, tan fuerte con su ropa militar y pensé, Él me va a amar y proteger. I continued on with my life, living just as I was before. While traveling, I met my husband and was immediately drawn to him. He was an army captain and looked confident, assured, and put together in his uniform. I thought to myself, he would protect me, take care of me, and love me. En el año 1991, nos mudamos de Perú a Miami con mis dos hijos pequeños, Renzo e Ivana. After we married, we moved from Peru to Miami with my two young children, Renzo and Ivana. A pesar de que estaba casada y tenía mis dos hijos, se, me sentía triste y vacía. Pensé que mi matrimonio ayudaría mis inseguridades, pero en ese tiempo mi matrimonio estaba mal. 
Even though I was married and had two children, I felt empty and sad inside. I thought marriage would fix my insecurities, but my marriage was a mess. En ese tiempo, decidí escribirle una carta a Dios diciéndole que solamente él podía arreglar mi matrimonio. During this time, I wrote a letter to God begging him to fix my marriage because deep in my heart, I knew God was the only one who could truly fix my marriage. Dios fue increíble porque en el año 1994, un hermano llamado Francisco Bedoya compartió su fe conmigo y me invitó a una charla bíblica. God answered that prayer, and in 1992, a brother named Francisco Bedoya reached out to me and invited me to a community group in his home. Después de muchos intentos por invitarme, acepté a ir a la charla bíblica, donde quedé impactada por el amor y la confraternidad que yo vi. Cuando terminó la clase, Katy González me preguntó si quería estudiar la Biblia en ese momento y acepté. After much persuasion, I finally agreed to join his community group. I was so impacted by the love and relationships the Bedoya had with each other. One day, during one of their meetings, a sister named Kathy Gonzalez asked me if I wanted to study the Bible that very night, and I said yes. Cuando iban avanzando mis estudios y me enfrenté a las escrituras, me di cuenta cuánto daño había hecho a Dios y a mi esposo. Durante, durante ese tiempo, le faltaba el respeto a él. También confesé mis inmoralidades y mi abuso de alcohol y egoísmo estaba, que estaban arruinando mi matrimonio. As I was studying the Bible, I was confronted with the scriptures and realized how much I had damaged my relationship with God and my husband. During that time, I had a complete lack of respect for him. I confessed my past immorality and alcohol abuse and realized just how much my selfishness was ruining my marriage. Lo que más me impactó de mis estudios fue la cruz. Pude sentir ese amor incondicional de Jesús por mí. Su sufrimiento y obediencia en la cruz me hicieron tener la urgencia de ser perdonada por Dios. Así que en febrero de 1994 me bauticé y hice que Jesús sea mi Señor. The study that impacted me the most was the cross study. I felt that unconditional love I had always been looking for in Jesus. His suffering and obedience on the cross helped me be eager to be forgiven by God. And on February 28th, 1994, I decided to be baptized and make Jesus Lord. Amen. Estoy agradecida a Dios por sacarme de la oscuridad y traerme a su luz maravillosa. Él transformó mi vida y la de mis hijos. Comprendí que solo Jesús podía llenar el vacío que sentí toda mi vida a través de su amor incondicional. I am forever grateful to God for taking me out of darkness and into his light. He transformed my life and my children's lives. I understood only Jesus could fix the void I have felt my whole life and that was through his unconditional love. A través de la obediencia, aprendí a ser más como Jesús. Aunque no estaba tomando como antes, pedí consejo a las mujeres de mi alrededor para asistir a un programa llamado eh, Celebrity Recovery en ese momento que tenía la iglesia aquí en Broward los domingos en la mañana. Through obedience, I learned to become more and more like Jesus. Even though I wasn't drinking like before, I asked advice from women around me and started to attend a church program called Celebrate Recovery. This program, which Broward Church hosts Sunday mornings, helps men and women with all types of addictions and codependencies. Mi propósito es ayudar, animar y ayudar a las mujeres de todo tipo de vida, depender de Dios. Le agradezco a Dios que Él me rescató de una vida vacía y que puedo compartir mi nueva vida con otros. My new purpose is to encourage women from all walks of life to lean on God. I thank God that he rescued me from an empty way of life so that I can share my new life with others. I pray to help women put their security in God, not in substance, addiction, or in relationships. Oro para poder ayudar a mujeres poner su seguridad en Dios y no en sustancias, adicciones, o relaciones. When I think about my life, I am reminded of this scripture in 1 Peter 1.18. 
For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from your empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Cuando pienso en mi vida, me hace recordar en esta escritura que está en primero de Pedro, uno de del 18 al 19. Pues Dios los ha rescatado a ustedes de la vida sin sentido que heredaron de sus antepasados. Y ustedes saben muy bien que el costo de este rescate se pagó con cosas, no se pagó con cosas corruptibles como el oro o la plata, sino con la sangre preciosa de Cristo. Amen. Gracias. I am so proud of my mom and all that she has overcome. Her example and dedication to God is what moved me to study the Bible 15 years ago. Thank you, Mommy, for your example. So now we're going to have um, John and, and um, Gabriel say a prayer.